my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we are going to decorate acrylic key rings. We've got two events of these coming up in our group, UK Cricut Creators. We do free virtual events. We do about eight a month. If you're not a member of the group, come and join us. You don't have to be in the UK, but you do need to love your cricket or want to get into the world of cricket. Please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel, you give the video a thumbs up and you also hit that notification bell to be alerted of when I upload new videos. So these are little acrylic keyring discs, they come in a pack. I will link to everything in this video in the description below. These are about five centimetres, so they're very, very tiny. Now when you get them, you'll see there's a film on both sides. I find the best way to do this is to remove the film of one side, especially if you're going to glitter it or add some paste to it. And then once that's all dry, remove the other side. So the first thing we're going to do is glitter one side of our key ring. So you want a glue that will dry clear. So something like Mod Podge is absolutely brilliant because it dries clear. So you want to come in with a nice even coat and you want it to be quite thin. So I go in with a decent amount and then I get the rest off of my brush and I then will do a nice thin even coating. That is the key to this. You want it to be thin because you want it to dry quite quickly, but you do need it to be an even coat and you need the whole of the disc to be covered. So make sure you take your time with this because this is the bit that's really important if you're going to glitter. I come in and I remove any excess glue from around my disc so it's not all on the sides. I'll also come in with something like a weeding tool to remove any glue that has been clogged up in the keyring hole. You will want a fine glitter for this. There's lots of good ones out there, but one of my all time favorites is the Nouveau Pure Sheen. Again, everything will be linked in the description below. I love this glitter, it's ultra fine. There are some amazing colors and it is so, so sparkly. You then want to come in with a real generous amount. I mean, I sprinkle loads on there to make sure that I've got every single area covered. Now, a lot of people will come in and dab their finger on the glitter at this point, to kind of press it down. I always find this doesn't work for me. I end up with a really uneven surface. If it works for you, fantastic. It doesn't work for me, so I'm just gonna leave it to dry. Now it's really important that each layer dries completely. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to dry naturally, or you can come in with a heat gun, so something like you use for embossing. Just don't get too close because it will start to bubble, and I'll show that later in the video, but you do want to make sure that every layer is completely dry. After a few minutes, you can remove the excess glitter from your disc. And you'll see if you've missed any spots, which in this case I have. So in my second coat, I can really make sure that I get every single piece and then I make it as nice and even as possible. We don't want any glitter wasted. So come in and decant it back into its original bottle. And once the first layer has completely dried, you can come in with a second layer of Mod Podge. And of course you can add your second layer of glitter. And then you want to make sure that that is completely dry as well. So what I tend to do is leave it to air dry for about five to 10 minutes. And then I'll come in with my heat blower. This is one I use for embossing. And I just give it a blast for a minute or so. You do not want to get too close because it will start to cause the glue to bubble. So do it from a height and you can even use a hairdryer and you just want to speed up that drying process a little bit, but you do not want to overheat it. So you can use Mod Podge to seal your glitter or, which I'm gonna use now, 
you can use the Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear. This is fantastic and I use it in a lot of projects and I'm also going to show you something else you can seal with in a moment. But we're going to come in and spray this onto our glitter. Now we don't want to be too close because we don't want it soaking and the other thing is we don't want to absolutely drench it. So small bursts from a good height. It also means that you can seal in things like print and cut as well. So you seal the glitter first with the Rust-Oleum. You can then add your print and cut and then seal it again. It will still be gritty, but it's not as gritty as it is if you use a Mod Podge to seal it. So the Rust-Oleum does smooth out the glitter a little bit. It does also dull it as the Mod Podge does as well, but we can't have everything, I guess. So you just want little short bursts to make sure you get a nice even coating, but as I say, you don't want to drench it. Again, you want to leave it to naturally dry for about 15, 20 minutes, and then you can come in with a heat gun just to finish it off. Again, do not get your heat too close to it because all the glue and everything will start to bubble up. So do it from a distance and you're just giving it a nice heat to help finish dry it off. A great product to use to seal is also the Deco Patch Satin Varnish. This is fantastic. So it's a liquid and you smooth it on. You want to do a nice thin layer. It will dull the sparkle, but nowhere near as much as Mod Podge and the Rust-Oleum will. And also, although there's still a grit to the glitter, it does make it smooth so that you can add vinyl or you could add a print and cut to that layer. And then of course you can seal the print and cut with the Rust-Oleum or if you've left it to dry long enough, you can use the satin varnish on a print and cut, so a printable vinyl as well. Again, you just want a nice, even layer and you don't want it to be too thick. Again, come in with something like a rhinestone picker or a weeding tool, just to remove anything that might be gunking out the key ring hole. Again, you want to let the satin varnish dry naturally about 15, 20 minutes and then I come in and finish it off with the heat gun just to make sure that every single layer is completely dry so that it goes nice and hard and it's not going to slip and slide about. So our green key ring has been sealed with the Rust-Oleum and our white one has been sealed with the satin varnish. So the vinyl that we're using is going to be really small lettering. Our discs are only five centimeters. I've used I Love Glitter as my font and I find that it cuts small really well. I use the washi sheet setting and what I do is, because it is really fiddly, I make a slit on both ends of the text so that I can separate the top of the word and the bottom of the word. And exactly the same as before, we're just gonna come in Hold down with your fingers because sometimes you will find that it wants to all move about, especially if you've got a little bit of vinyl that's caught and hasn't perhaps cut, but you can use your true control knife and your fingers to help you. And we're just going to come in and remove the other half of that vinyl. got one of my key rings here we've got our glitter side and then of course we've got our other side so on the smooth side I'm just going to add some vinyl so I've just done a letter here and then I'll come in with the name which is done in I love glitter and you're just going to transfer the way that you usually would so nothing special about the transfer process on the front so I find if you seal the glitter with either the Rust-Oleum or the Satin Varnish, you can actually add vinyl to the glitter side as well. 
it takes a little bit of patience it's not quick and easy like it would be on a flat surface so you do need to come in and really give that a good work and then I find if you get your scraper and you wrap your transfer tape around it sometimes you might need to use your fingers to help you with the process you can actually push down with your scraper and pull back with your transfer tape and use your fingers to pat everything down. This will allow you to transfer onto the glitter side. Now we don't normally seal vinyl, but because it's on top of glitter, it is worth giving it a sealant. And again, you can do that either with the Rust-Oleum or the Satin Varnish. You can do it with epoxy as well. If you want an epoxy video, then I will do it. But I warn you now, I'm a big safety uh, person when it comes to epoxy. So there will be about five minutes of safety. But I can do epoxy if you want. As I say, we wouldn't normally seal vinyl, but because it's on top of the glitter side, we will. So I've got some Cosmic Shimmer Luster Polish here in Bubblegum and I've also got some Metallic Gilding Polish in Heather. These are both Cosmic Shimmer. They are great for working with key rings. What I love about the Cosmic Shimmer polishes is that they have a sponge at the top of them. Now this is great for larger acrylic pieces but not so much for these because as I say they're five centimeters. So you can either come in with a paintbrush or you can come in with a sponge. I use the Martha Stewart Daubers, they're fantastic. But to start with I'm going to use a paintbrush. And I'm just going to paint on a streak going straight across. And this streak can be thin, it can be thick, it can be wavy. There's no right or wrong to this. Now this is really good because you can layer up the polish. So once the first one has dried, you can then go in with a second coat and even a third coat if you want a really vibrant streak. So this time I'm gonna use my Martha Stewart sponge dauber. As I say, I love these. They are fantastic to work with and I'm going to use the metallic gilding polish in Heather. So I'm just going to add the polish to my dauber and again I'm going to come in and just make a streak and you can go in several times with this. So you could do a first layer and then leave it to dry and do a second layer or you can add it there and then so you're getting a nice thicker streak. Again, there's no right or wrong to this, it's completely up to you. So my first layer has dried and I'm gonna come in with my dauber this time for the luster polish and just add to my streak again. So I'm getting a nice bright coverage. Another option is to actually use vinyl. So there's lots of images in design space that you can use. I've done two, so one on each side here in two different colors. And it looks beautiful, so I could do something on either side and I've got a nice even streak. Once they've dried, I can then come in and remove the protective film from the other side and of course I can then add vinyl to that.
The other thing you can use is the Nouveau Glacier Paste. This works really well for this. Again, you can come in with a sponge or a brush and you can do a streak in this. It's absolutely gorgeous because it's got a frosted effect. And again, you can layer it up. So you can put the first layer on, leave it dry, and then do a second layer as well. We can also do a vinyl pattern if we want to. So I'm going to add this to one side and then I'm going to frost it using some Rust-Oleum frosted spray. And then I'm going to add the name or a letter on the other side and frost that as well. So we end up with both sides frosted, but one side is patterned and one has got a letter. Now, if you're going to do this with vinyl, you want to make sure it's a vinyl that's the same color on both sides. So it's purple on the front and then I can turn it over and transfer the way I usually would. But when I pull the Cricut backing off, it's also the same color on the back. So it's ideal for this. You definitely want a vinyl that's the same color on the right side and the sticky side. And then you can come in and you can add it to one side of your key ring. I want a frosted effect, so I'm going to use Rust-Oleum frosted glass. Again, you don't want to do this super close and you don't want to drench it. It's just a light, nice spray. Once it's dried, we can remove the protective film from the other side. We can then add our vinyl, so whether it be a letter or a name or an image, completely up to you. And then you can either leave it like that or you could frost that side as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to frost both sides. So hopefully you've got a few tips and tricks in this video and I've shown you a few possible ways that you can decorate uh, key rings. You can also add diamantes and you could do uh, drops and all sorts of embellishments on these. So you can go really simple or you could go really outrageous if you wanted to. Lots and lots of options. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them in the comments section below. As I said, all the items I've used today are in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.